I'm literally like half asleep right now and you can 100% tell. Hey guys, um, why is it so zoomed in right now? Welcome back to my channel, how's everyone doing? Hope you're doing well. Today I'm drinking coffee while I film because that's where my life is right now. I need sleep so desperately. Okay, so this video is gonna be a little bit more informational than my usual videos because I've been getting a lot of questions. A lot of people have been DMing me on Instagram asking me about different UCSD questions, which I'm totally more than happy to answer. And I've talked to all these people individually on Instagram, but I figure I should make a video just kind of talking about the questions they ask because I figure if they ask, then probably more than one person is also wondering. Um, so just starting. <laughs> oh, my nails. Ooh, I'm sorry. This is the second video in the row they've been bad. That was not English. This is the second video in a row they've been bad. <sighs> I'm sorry. So the first question is, how did I graduate so fast? Okay, so basically in high school, you guys should have some kind of counselors that would be able to like map out your exact um, situation based off of the AP classes you've taken but basically what happened for me was I took literally every pretty much AP that I could in high school um, because I like to torture myself <laughs> and I took the AP test and I passed a lot of them except for AP physics don't come for me with the acceleration of gravity cuz I'm not familiar with her. So yeah, I took like tons of APs and I passed all the tests. So what happens is those AP classes count for a class in college that you would have had to take. UCSB has GEs. So you have to finish general education classes before you start working on your major classes. So let's say I have to take like a science class or whatever because I took AP environmental science in high school and passed that AP test that cancels out that class, right? So I only am left with a few GEs and then the rest of my major prereqs. By the time I was a freshman, I was already technically a sophomore because of the classes that I took in high school that transferred over. So I would just say if you're in high school and you're like pretty early on, try to take as many APs if you wanna graduate quickly, but it's definitely not for everyone. Like it wasn't fun to graduate early in the moment, you know? I had to take like a lot of units. I took 16 units a quarter and I took summer classes one summer online and it's hard work and it's a lot but if you take APs in high school it will make your life easier in college so yeah that's how I did it um sorry I don't have a more exciting explanation like um I just like made out with a professor or something I don't know I'm sorry oh is that too far I don't know uh, my personality Next question, what is my major? I was undeclared my first year. I applied undeclared and then I declared communication at the end of my freshman year. Um, with communication, you can only get into the major after you've done the prerequisites. So it's like, I think three or four prerequisite classes you have to do and then you apply to get into the major and then if you have a good GPA, you get into the major and then yeah. So I was a communication major. Yeah, that major's pretty vague and you can take classes in like marketing, um, interpersonal communication, which is like from person to person. Oh, I took a lot of like law classes. You can take classes on law. Um, like I took an entire class that was on freedom of speech. Freedom of, freedom of speech, which was very interesting. Just kidding, it literally wasn't. Like why am I lying and trying to make it sound like it was interesting? It wasn't interesting to me at all. Um, but I also should have gone to an art school, so that's besides the point. Um, so you can take a bunch of different types. I took a lot of like technology classes too. Honestly, when I was choosing classes, I was just trying to get them like in a row so I could just start my day at 8 a.m. and then just have a class back to back to back to back till three and then just have the rest of the day without school, um, which is not what most people do, but Again, I like to put myself through suffering. So it's just a personal preference. Next, how to make friends. Okay, people, I totally can 
relate to the people who are wondering this, okay? I went to UCSB with no friends, okay? No one from my high school went there besides like a few kids that I didn't really know. None of my friends went there. I almost went to a college that a lot of my friends went to, San Diego State, but I ended up going to UCSB by myself. So I was definitely nervous going into it about making friends, but at the end of the day, you just really have to trust that the right people are gonna come into your life and you just have to be confident with yourself to know that even if you don't make friends right away, you're gonna be fine. Like it's not like you're gonna die if you don't have friends for two weeks or three weeks or however long it takes, you know? You just have to be very secure in yourself and know that you are going to attract the people that belong in your life and the people that are best for you and not toxic and fun and honest and genuine and good people if you possess those characteristics in yourself to begin with, if that makes sense. So. I would say if you're nervous about making friends, focus more on working on being able to be okay by yourself. I think in college you really learned that because in high school, you know, you're constantly around people your age, um, you're around your friends, your family, but when you go to college, especially if you go far away and you don't know anyone, it's such a great time to be able to really deepen your connection with yourself and understand that if you don't have plans on a Saturday night for like your first week or whatever, like it's not the end of the world and you will come out the other end stronger and more confident, which will then attract people into your life who are also confident and strong and not like- We just wanna hang around each other cause like we wanna be popular and like have a group and like have a friend group and like have a clique and go to parties, haha. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's normal to be nervous about that. Every Think about it, everyone's nervous about that. Literally every single person is nervous about making friends when they go to school. By being yourself and being genuine and working on being confident on your own, you will attract the right people into your life and the right people will want to be your friend because they will see those characteristics that you possess, right? So I think shift the focus almost a little bit away from needing other people and focus it back onto like yourself and how can you grow from, you know, being out of, being out of your comfort zone and not knowing anyone. Like how is that an opportunity for you to grow and then in the process of growing, attract people that will be lifelong friends, you know? I would recommend like going places that you like, you know, let's say you like coffee shops. I love coffee shops. If you hang out there, you're gonna meet someone that also likes coffee shops, okay? And you guys could bond over that and like share a coffee and like kiss a little bit, I don't know. Well, that was, took a turn. Um, yeah, or like if you love the beach, go to the beach. You'll meet fellow beachgoers there. You know, if you live in your residence hall your first year, there's a bunch of kids that are freshmen that all wanna make friends. Like everybody your first year wants to make friends because everybody's excited and nobody wants to be alone, right? So everybody's super friendly, especially your first year, even for transfer students. If you're a transfer student going into your junior year, like everybody's friendly, everybody wants to make friends. Nobody's like, Ugh. you know, everybody's nervous and everybody's feeling the same way So I think if you go into it with that mindset, just be confident in yourself Put yourself out there. Don't be afraid to be yourself like it's a fresh start to honestly just discover your personality and if you had toxic friendships in high school to like leave that whole I need, I need like, like to, to use people use for clout all that mentality like just leave it and just focus on people for who they are. And yeah, I could talk about this for a million years, but also I would recommend, um, I found my roommates on a Facebook group. So if you can join a Facebook group and like stalk the people, and if you see people that you think you would be friends with, you could always DM them. Because like I said, everyone going there is nervous about making friends. So if you DM someone or like, it's not that weird, okay? I slid into Riley, who was my roommate my freshman year, I slid into her DMs and was like, hi, hi I, like, I feel like we have so much in common. And like, we were both, um, um, a captain of cheer and we both, we both like lose like, the, the child and, and like, I don't know, I also, I also like, like quesadillas, quesadillas, you know? Like something stupid like that, but it worked and now she's my friend. So slide into someone's DMs, don't be shy, okay? And trust me, when you get there, you'll have tons of opportunities to meet people. Just don't stress out too much about it. Focus on yourself. 
more I would say and obviously now because of the pandemic everything's probably different there's probably not as much social activity there so that's why I'm saying DMing people or talking to people online that are also going is probably gonna be like your best bet and just you know work on being comfortable by yourself because that is such an important skill that you will have for the rest of your life okay next question would I recommend UCSB <laughs> okay um <laughs> i personally feel like there is no answer to this question it's normal to ask this question and to wonder this but my answer is not going to apply to someone who isn't me does that make sense you know for me ucsb honestly wasn't a good fit for me personally <laughs> so for me it wasn't the best fit because i want to do something in the entertainment and art kind of field but if you are looking for a college experience, the classic, like meeting people, going to parties, you're by the beach, you study, if you want to do something related to what UCSB's top majors are, then I would say go, you know. UCSB is known for their communication program, they're known for their psychology department, I think they're also known for like econ, I don't know, research that. I'm also not a college counselor, so like, take everything I say with a grain of salt. This is just my personal experience, don't come for me. But I would say like, that's something that you need to figure out. You have to realize like the worst case scenario is you go there, you don't like it, and you transfer. Like that's not that big of a deal. It seems like a big deal right now, but in the grand scheme of your entire life, it's not gonna be a big deal. Understand what it is you wanna get out of the college experience. If you want to get out meeting friends and partying and boba, there's plenty of opportunities to do that at UCSB and you'll probably really enjoy it. If you want to get, let's say like a job in marketing or be prepared for grad school, UCSB really prepares people to go into grad school. They're like super focused on that. So if that's something you're interested in, you, should, you could go and there'd be lots of opportunities. But the thing is, is the school isn't as important as what you are planning to do with your life. Does that make sense? Because I remember I did this. You obsess so much about the school when really the school doesn't really matter. What matters and what you might be avoiding by like hyper focusing on the school is like what do you actually want to do? You know? Because schools cost money, right? So you're paying for your education at this point. So if you go into it really super unsure, it's using money and you don't even know what direction you're headed in, right? Which is what I did. And it's totally normal to do that. Like if you're gonna, if you're going into UCSB or any college undeclared and like super confused, that's normal. That's what I did. But what I'm saying is I would have rather someone told me to take the time to figure out what I wanted to do before I just jumped into a random university because I was like, oh, it's high ranked and like, eh, everyone will like think it's cool that I go there. You know what I'm saying? So that's just me being really honest. I would say um, I can't recommend it to you if I don't know you and your actual circumstances and what you want and what you want to get out of it. Figure out what your intention is behind going to college and see if UCSB is a match for your intention. That's what I would say. How to stand out when applying for UCSB? That is the next question. I would say this is hard for me to answer because I'm not a college administration worker, right? But I did get into UCSB, so I can talk a little bit about my application process. I wrote essays for mine. Um, I wrote about like pretty personal stuff, but I do know that for the essays, I don't, and I don't even know if they're doing essays anymore because they're not doing SATs, right? So I don't really know what's going on right now. I'm old, but um, I would say focus on just things that have really impacted you and telling a story that shows your development as a person and how it relates to you as a student, right? So a powerful story would be a story that has challenged you and has made it more difficult for you to be a high achieving student, yet despite that you persevered and have achieved all these 
accolades. You know, I'm sure people applying to HSB have great grades and great test scores. So I would just say focus on stories that are different from other people, stories that affect you directly, not like your parents, not your sister, not your brother, you. And yeah, that, that would be my advice. Just like focus on what makes you stand out as a student and what makes you worthy of attending their university and what makes you different from other applicants. What makes you add something new to their university? Because at the end of the day, that's what they want is they want a diverse population that will make their university better. What advice would I give a student wanting to go? I kind of talked about this earlier. Um, just go into it, understanding what you want to get out of it, or at least have a goal for what you want to get out of it. I would say don't be scared. It's so scary and I was so scared, but you will be fine and you will be so much stronger of a person after you get through it. And I would just say trust yourself and take this time to really get to know yourself and reflect on everything you've accomplished because if you get into the school, like that's a really big accomplishment, dude. <laughs> Claps for you. I don't know what that was, but it hurt. Yeah, that's what I would say. Just, you know, you got this, okay? Your life's about to change though, so get ready for that. Lastly, was I happy there overall? This is an interesting question, okay? It was actually a really difficult experience for me personally, just because like I said earlier, I didn't know what I wanted to get out of college when I was going, right? So I was very confused throughout a lot of it and didn't really have a sense of direction or purpose. Um, I tried to transfer schools like multiple times because I wanted to be closer to my auditions because it was so hard driving back and forth because um, I obviously auditioned and worked in LA and then I had to go to school in UC at Santa Barbara. So I tried to apply to like USC, LMU. I got into LMU, but I didn't end up going. It's hard because I had times where I was miserable, but I also had great times where I was happy. Like I met some of my closest friends there, right? So I would say that's another question that I can't really answer for you or even answer for myself. You know, there's pros and cons to all of it. And I didn't have like the perfect, like stereotypical, amazing college memories. Um, I love college, like take me back, like way back Wednesday, like throwback Thursday, flashback Friday, take me back. I wanna go, I miss my frat boys. You know, I didn't have that experience at all. But I did learn a lot about myself and about other people and about what I want out of life and about my friends and all that stuff. So, you know, there's pros and cons to everything. Um, it's ultimately a decision you have to make yourself and I know it's scary, but you can do it I know this is such a hard and scary time, but feel free to DM me if you have more questions You can do this. It's normal to be nervous. It's normal to be freaking out Just try to look inward and focus on what you want out of it focus on Trying to stay calm amidst all this change that's gonna happen for you and know that no decision is a wrong decision. If you choose UTSB, if you choose a different college, it's all happening for a reason because there's a plan for everyone and nothing that you choose will lead you down a completely horrible path, you know? It's like you're choosing between two colleges that are probably really great. So it's like, try not to stress so much. Enjoy your time. Be proud of yourself. Be thankful that you can even afford and have the privilege of going to college. Neither of my parents had that privilege, so I personally felt very blessed to go to school, even though it was hard and it was, you know, challenging and inconvenient. I still felt very blessed the whole time I was there because I know so many members of my family that would have loved to go to school, but they couldn't. So, uh, with that said, uh, thank you guys so much for watching my video and uh, supporting my channel. Please, like this video, subscribe, like, we already said that, hit the bell. Send this to your grandpa if he's deciding what college he wants to go to. It's never too late. Send this to your friend who's the most nervous about going to college. Just send her this video or him. I swear, my vibes will calm down the most nervous of child. Okay, I just have that energy. Something, something about, something about my aura. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Oh my God, I'm so tired and I feel like I just talked like so fast. Could anyone even hear me? If you couldn't hear me, Rewind this video and play it in 0.5 speed. Good night. <laughs>